But let's start talking about allopatric speciation first. So the concept here is that you have two populations which can interchange genes as much as they want. They can have, you know, offspring with each other. A good example of that would be some, for example, the American population and the Russian population. Although separated by thousands of kilometers in many cases, the populations can still have children with each other, especially in the modern society when you have the internet and globalization and air travel. So gene flow can continue between the populations to the point that they are going to not be separated enough for speciation to occur between them. But if so, what is some source of geographical barrier actually is raised between the two populations to the point that they're never again be able to cross with each other so they're going to become isolated from each other. That means the gene flow is interrupted by some sort of geographic barrier. Subsequent to that, some sort of mutation happens and separately on each of the populations and then this will actually lead to a to a separation between them and differentiation now between them. Now, if these environments that they're in are going to be different, in other words, if there's differences in the environment, in there's genetic drift, or in other words, random events, or even different selective pressures in the environment, that will cause divergence across the isolated gene pools. In other words, you're going to have that graph where they used to be like this, you know, so they used to have all the variety together, but then you have these two mutations which arise and over some periods of time because of the isolation you can't have the middle developing and so you're going to have the, that divergent evolution happening when there's shifts to opposite ends if each environment is favoring a, a different kind of look. So then even if you do remove the reproductive barrier between them after that and after enough changes have occurred between the two uh, populations, they will be unable to actually have children with each other and speciation is completed. But notice that this happened with actual physical separation between the species and that's why we call that allopatric speciation as you see in this group of fish here on the right side. So that's allopatric speciation. Now you may say like, have we actually seen this kind of thing happen? You know, is this even possible? Well, we have records in the fossil record of things like that happening, and we actually have geographical evidence for biogeography of this happening. Uh, remember the evidence for evolution. Remember, this includes all kinds of different things which actually substantiate evolution, including things like you know biogeography, the study of microbiology, and field study of biology, which sees examples of real evolution taking place. We talk about anat anatomy when you see uh, things like homologous structures, analogous structures, vestigial structures, and mosaic structures. You have molecular biology, which examines DNA differences and molecular clocking. Uh, you have embryology, which also looks at those differences or similarities that exist between the embryos of different species. You have paleontology, which looks at the fossil record. And all of these things put together will be different kinds of evidence to support substantiate evolution. So across these things, you will, you will see evidence of evolution actually taking place. So in this example that is a specific, we actually already talked about it, the species of salamanders in California diverge because of geographical separation between them. As they migrated across their ecosystem from some sort of parental species, one of them went move east and one of them move west of the actual Rockies and Sierra Nevada and things like that. So that means one of them live in a desert environment of the other side of the Rockies and one of them live in the very moist environment on the other on the west side of the Rockies. And so Genetic flow between the two species was, of course, blocked by a very large mountain range, and that means that they will either drift or be selected against uh, differently from each other, and then that will cause differentiation between the species, which ultimately make them no longer to mate. Now, even as they flowed south into into the different ecosystems, eventually they passed this, the mountains on the other side, and then two of the daughter species were able to meet. And they even looked similar, but they were not able to actually cross because enough behavioral, mechanical, and temporal variation was now differentiating between the two of them to the point that they actually did not, were not interested in each other, or even if they were interested in each other, couldn't actually successfully make viable offspring over generations. So you see here, this is an actual evidence of, and biogeographical evidence of speciation taking place, and it's pretty cool. Here's another example of something that we actually notice around the Grand Canyon. You see in the south rim of the Grand Canyon, you have two uh, this, these species of rodents. And on the north rim, you have very, very similar species of rodents, but 
unfortunately, they're going to be different species because they're not going to be able to have successful encounters with each other. Now, in the case of the first one here, they're actually completely different species. But in the case of the second one, they're actually close enough that they can even have the offspring, but the offspring is not as viable as possible. So you can say it that it's in the process of completing speciation, and that's why they're considered subspecies. Notice that both of them are called Alberti, but the first one is called Alberti Alberti, while the next one is called Alberti Caibebensis. So that means that this pair over here is in the process of completing its speciation. So they have probably split not as recently as the other group who has probably split longer or went faster evolutionary differences and now can no longer have offspring with each other because they were geographically separated by the large chasm of the um, Grand Canyon. So this is very interesting. But all, you may say that all of these things were not things that have been observed. You know, these, these things that we look noticing after the fact. I will, of course, make the argument that it's, just because you can't see something happening, it doesn't mean you don't know it happened. You know, you see a tree, you knew that it grew. You see a um, explosion, you know that it, you know that it, it happened. You see, you see a building collapsed, you know that it, it fell apart. You know, you see a body with with a gun. Uh, next to it and a bullet hole in the wall and you see a, a bullet hole in the body you see blood and you see oh my god a murder just took place you don't actually need to see things you can put the evidence together pretty easily and, and verify that the thing actually did happen it's just simple logic and it's what science is based upon so I don't think it makes sense to just say it didn't happen but if you need actual evidence of speciation if it bothers you that we haven't seen this type of macro evolution actually happen well I'll tell you that we actually have done experiments to actually see it these different species of the same kind of plant look so different from each other look at the difference between them but they're all recent evolutionary events that happen in the highlands of Hawaii and you see how they are now incapable of actually uh, reproducing with each other because there uh, gathers so many differences and in one case they actually evolve so differently that they actually are called a different genus altogether and there's evidence of recent evolutionary events about this because some of these species did not exist as, as early as 300 years ago but of course this has been happening over millions and millions of years and so that's why it, it's a process that has started before but if so if this is not enough for you still Let's look at a different one. This is actually done in the lab in Yale. And then we're going to do a different video just about evidence for macroevolution. But here's a little sample of what's to come. They got these fruit flies, okay? Same one kind of thing that uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan used when he did the chromosome inheritance uh, studies. And he put one set in starch and the other set, Diane, put in Malto. So this is a, a female from a Yale University, a doctor that was looking at this. And she noticed that... Separating the fruit flies from different environments led to speciation between the two of them because what they actually did is they allowed this to go on for several generations of the fruit flies. By the way, it's not exactly the same species that Thomas Hunt Morgan used. This is going to be Drosophila pseudo obscura. So it's a sp different species than the one that Thomas Hunt Morgan used. But either way, what actually happened in the lab then is that after letting them grow separately and for a few generations on different mediums, all right, the, and remember they came from the same initial population, all right, they tried to cross them together and, and then it, see what would happen. Then they put them back together in the same uh, vial and see what happened. Now, what, look at the results and look at the patterns. So this is the males and females which were grown in different environments. So um, the females which were which came from the starch colony tend to mate more often with the males from the starch colony. The males from the maltose colony tend to mate more often with the male females from the maltose colony. And then you had less which were actually attempting to breed with the females uh, from a, or males from a different a colony or the ones that grew in the different medium which means that some sort of evolutionary step must have happened so that they were preferring the the children that actually grew in that separate medium and they actually attributed that to to behavioral differences and morphological differences that developed in the few generations that they were separate from each other now clearly here you can still make offspring with um a different um, generation basically with the different um, strands so it's not a completed speciation but you see initiation of the speciation process because you see already a pattern of preference for 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 people who are in your own group and that is definitely interesting and notice how you compare that with the control group where they were basically left in the same population 
and there was absolutely no difference between between the groups or no statistical difference between the groups in that case so what they understood there is that the reproductive barrier although not absolute and some fruit flies may still occur it appears to to have initiated a uh, speciation over just a few generations so divergence actually began and they actually did this in the laboratory and studies like this have been replicated many times 